Hi, I'm John Lexius, a destination wedding photographer based out of Hamburg, Germany. Today I want to talk to you about Narrative Select, an app that revolutionized my workflow when it comes to cutting, cutting, cutting. Does anybody actually know how to pronounce that? I don't. An app that changed the way I was cutting my images, big time. You all might be familiar with an app called Narrative Publish, which changed the game for people, especially wedding photographers, about how people were blogging their images. It was easier, faster, all of these kind of things. And yeah, it actually made blogging fun. And Narrative Select, it doesn't promise you to have more fun coding the images. I mean, come on, who enjoys going through thousands of images after a wedding? But what they promise you is that with Narrative Select, you can cool your images twice as fast. And can this thing live up to its promise? We gotta find out. But before we start, let's get into some, some facts about the app. So Narrative Select is AI powered and what the app can do for you, how, how it can help you basically is that the app will, was the algorithm in the app will detect faces in your photos and it will analyze these faces and it will tell you whether the eyes are open, if someone's blinking, if the eyes are closed. And on top of that, it will tell you how much in focus the person is. It puts assessments to these analyzations and it will graphically show you in a quick way which images are keepers and which not, based on the algorithm that is of course. So it cannot replace a human brain making a decision because if you ask people to close their eyes, of course, it will tell you the eyes are closed. So all of these things. But let's go head to the computer and see what the app can do for you. And I'm gonna give you more detail about all of these things then. Okay, come on over. So this is what Narrative Select looks like when you open it up. Pretty simple, easy, modern user interface. I'm gonna go about the basics first. On the top right, you can go into the preferences and basically just adjust a few, a few things, not too much. The option of auto advance to the next image after adding, changing or clearing a rating. Definitely want to keep this checked as this thing makes it faster. The second one is clear rating on duplicate rate. So applying a duplicate rating with a shortcut key will clear that rating. I don't have to use that as I auto advance, so I, I'm not double checking. Keyboard shortcuts, pretty simple. You want to use left and right or up and down to advance. Now it's become interesting because this is where the strength of Narrative Select comes into play. You see here, we have different settings for the eye and focus assessment color. I tend to use it um, as a standard setting, which is that one. So I want like a clear red and an orange, a yellow, light green and dark green for it to tell me how it analyzes the photo. I can choose which icons I want. If I want the eyes and focus, eyes only, focus only. Of course I want eyes and focus. I want to see the icons in the zoom and I want to see score details in close-ups. I will show you that later. And I can tell um, the, the app to ignore faces in the background that are totally out of focus. This I will, leave, I will leave on because I have no interest in the people in the background who are out of focus anyway. Okay, let's talk about the assessments and what they, what they mean. The assessments are being put to a person's face after analyzing the face. So you will see these icons. Like one looks a bit like, like a mouse and the other one like an eye. So you see, for this guy, the eyes are marked or labeled red, which means eyes are closed. The dark green means it's in focus still. So if I hover over this icon, this assessment icon, you will get details on the judgment. For example, this guy's eyes are closed and he's 93% in focus. Same over here for her. Her eyes are fully open and she's nearly in focus. And for him, his, his eyes are barely open, nearly out of focus. Let's get into the last preferences. And this is where it comes interesting for me as a Sony shooter because until now, I wasn't really able to use Narrative Select to its, in its full power because the 
embedded JPEG previews of Sony RAW files are really small and tiny. So the photos appeared pixelated. So it didn't really help me analyzing or deciding which photos to keep. So now I can have the app create high resolution JPEGs for me and it doesn't really slow down the workflow. So this is, this is pretty good. So I will always create high resolution JPEGs for IRW files. The interface, yeah, I always leave that as, as is. Okay, so you're coming home from a wedding and you want to start culling your images. So what you want to do is click create project. You can then choose a folder of images or drag and drop on, or you can Im move images directly from memory card onto your computer. I already put images on a hard drive and I'm just gonna add these. These are about 2000 photos, so let's get them in. I can add a project name. It selects the, the name of the folder, which makes no sense for me this time because the folder was just named raw. And I don't want that. Okay, so next. Okay, so we imported the photos. It was really quick. And let's talk a bit about the basic uh, user interface over here. On the left side, we got this uh, image swipe where you can just scroll through and select photos. And you see the photos that you selected. You notice the assessments right here. You can zoom in, zoom out, which I never use because I don't need to. Over here, I got my filters, which means I could show images without assessment warnings, and I can show only the ones with assessment warnings. And of course, my ratings. You see that it's not only imported the photos, it already selected 159 images with moderate image assessment warnings and 90 with strong image assessment warnings. What that means is, if I trust the AI, I would only have to cull through 1738 photos. But let's about talk about that later. Over here, we got the close-up panel and this is where it becomes interesting. You see, it detects faces. We got two people in the photo and we have two faces over here. And again, it shows me a close-up of the face plus the assessment warnings. Eyes are fully open for now well but he's out of focus. Obviously was my choice, so it's not a problem over here. Anna's eyes are fully open and nearly in focus. This photo might be a keeper, so let's put one star to it. It automatically advances to the next photo. As you notice here, there's tons of images looking quite similar, right? So what you can do is, you see this little icon over the, on top, the scenes view. If you click it, Narrative will put all of these photos in a scene meaning that you will have one stripe with the main image and then you have a side one, you have the scenes. For this one, it's 91 images in total. These are over here. Like for example, for this scene, it would be three images in total. If I go up and down with the cursor, I can go to the next scene. If I go left and right, I can move to the next photo within the scene. So let's go to the next photo. Over here, we see his eyes Partially open, nearly in focus, eyes closed, nearly in focus. You can see if there's a better one. Of course, I'm going through and checking composition and, 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 and everything, but I'm also checking the ratings, which I had to get used to because for me, I always, in my first calling, just went by, is it in focus? And afterwards I would go for composition. So I still have to find a way to get both of these set in my mind at the same time. Let's go, let me just find a scene. It has more people in it to make it more interesting. Okay, here we have um, a shot of a group of people. And what you notice to the right is that every face that's important is being detected. And I can right away see, yep, 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 green, 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 green. Let's keep that one. Simple, right? Here's another one. Everything's green. Eyes partially open. Nope, they are actually open. So let's rate that one. Over here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine faces, which are important. Ten. And we have two, four, six, eight, ten. All of these faces are being shown. Crazy, right? First time for me, that was mind blown. So tell me, is it easier to just have a look over here and check the colors or check every face over here? I want to show you one more thing. AI identifies his glasses as glasses, which is pretty rad. Okay, so let's say I want to check all of the photos I selected. So now it's like 22 of them. 
and you see oh, in, in the overall in the grid view you see there's a couple of uh, red assessments still so for example this one and it tells me her eyes are closed that's why it's marked red obviously this is what i wanted so definitely gonna keep this photo right so let's get back to grid view and my workflow would be to go through the whole shoot just going through the 1738 photos and selecting the ones I want. Of course, I'm trusting the AI to identify the photos, but the AI, it cannot know which photos are taken with eyes closed on purpose. So I will go and have a look at, at the ones that it filtered out and just see whether there's a photo I want to keep or I don't want to keep because there might be photos like these ones where eyes are closed on purpose. So I'm, I have to check out these but it's still way faster than what I did before with Photo Mechanic. And it's, it's just way more fun. Let's say we had all these photos selected. What the next awesome time saver is about Narrative Select is that if you wonder how do you get these to Lightroom now, you can just basically click on Chip Images to Lightroom, select which version you're using, which is Lightroom Classic for me. I will create a new catalog. I will name it Anna and now we'll narrative select test catalog. And now I'm telling narrative select to only choose the images that are rate being rated. Clicking on ship, Lightroom, uh, Lightroom is being opened up. It automatically starts in the import section. All the photos I selected are being marked over here, so I can just click import and here we are. We selected 22 photos. We got 22 photos over here. And we will just start editing our photos. Boom. As easy as that. So, what do you think about Narrative Select? Is that an app you would want to use? Would it change your way of culling your images? Would it speed up your workflow? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want. Because there's going to be more videos coming from now on. And yeah, thanks for watching and have a great day. Stay safe.